Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining in to view my presentation. My name is Sadie Goddard, and today I will be presenting on art, decoration, or progressive instrument. Now, what will we discuss today? We want to dive in today into Belizean heritage depicted, which means bridging the gap connecting art to heritage, what is the importance of visual arts to the preservation of heritage in Belize, and the sustainability of art, art in the future, the transference of skills. How important or why is it important to transfer these skills to our future generation? And understanding the business of art, applying models from education, and understanding that art is not just a hobby, it is a business within this country and should be respected as such. The art world in Belize is a mixing pot, much like the culture of the Caribbean. It surrounds various cultural experiences, socioeconomic experiences. It is used for profit as a business. It's used as a tool for protests and certain social issues. And for many, it's art therapy. So what we will need to understand at the beginning of this presentation is what is art? What are we looking at um, in this particular presentation? We are focusing on the visual arts. So when we're looking at the art of Belize, we're looking at the visual arts and how this particular branch of art can aid in the development of the country as a whole. Is it a viable tool for development? And if we agree, how can we better understand the needs of the artists and how can the artists aid at, as a result in the sustainability of their economy, of the economy of the country? In 2003, with the announcement of the Convention for the Protection of Intangible Cultural Heritage. Visual arts was officially included inside of or noted as important to cultural heritage. It is intangible. It is considered an aesthetic element that signifies harmony, unity, contrast, light, shade, and it also is a representation of the particular culture of the artist. There's a distinctive relationship between our history and the pieces which were created. Now, in terms of cultural preservation, if we were to look around at the various styles and artists that you have in Belize, you would recognize that it is important to respect and to understand them because each artist is coming from a very uh, different viewpoint. If we were to look at the protest art of Alex Sankar, for example, we understand that he takes a more political hardline stance and is protesting against certain social economic issues. If we were to look at Kelvin Beiser, whose piece is depicted right here, his heritage piece outlines the practices of the Maya people in the background of a Maya temple. Various artists depict their pieces and their pieces are a direct representation of their life experiences, their ancestral experiences as well, because what they would have learned was passed down to them and is then shown with this skill, the skill for visual arts, it is depicted from time immemorial, we have looked to cave drawings to understand what the past was about. Our future generations will look to these paintings to understand what their past was about, which is our present. We hope that in the future, there will be a preservation of culture through the visual arts. Good afternoon, Belize and the world. My name is Kelvin Beiser. I am founder of the Fiction Paintings. Today, the Art Shop Gallery and myself has team up to take us in depth in one of my recent work. The idea is to bring across some of the work entails in getting the 
the east completing, but not only that, but also getting an understanding of why we create these things and what kind of message as an artist we are trying to send. So the painting that I want to go through with you will be the one behind me that is titled In the Company of Gods. What my aim was at the time was trying to bind tourism along with having a local appreciation for our cultural representation. I'm glad to be working on that industry also because art just in a way or another brings everybody together. This is one of my favorite and latest pieces that I have here. And I'm very happy to share it with you guys. I'm a big fan of the Mayan culture and history. So being on the lockdown, I had a lot of time to think about a lot of stuff. And uh, this is one of the ideas that came to my mind. And uh, the colors and everything, they were just there and I had to get them on, on the canvas. The whole concept of doing this painting, it's uh, that being locked down, you know, sometimes we don't really appreciate what we have and what we do. So uh, I've missed a lot of stuff just for being insecure and not just going for it. So I had to bring it here. And the idea is that uh, if you like what you do, things tend to be a lot easier and much fun for you. So this painting is titled Amor al Arte. So it's love for arts. And uh, doesn't necessarily have to be arts but like everything you do in life, you know, so to make it easier and much fun, you should put a uh, little more love to everything you do. And uh, like I said, I really like the concept of the Mayan culture and everything. So it's a sacrifice. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a lot to get to where you want to go. So uh, put your heart on everything you do that way it works or it doesn't work you did it with that passion so there won't be no regrets and uh i think basically that's that's the whole idea of bringing this to life as you can see during the covid 19 lockdown across the world and in belize there was a rise and development in the artistic world People were looking for outlets to express themselves, to tell the stories of their experiences, how they were feeling during that period. Lack of anything, anything else to do outdoors pushed them to explore these different vent ventures. What it did for the art world in Belmopan and across Belize is a lot of artists started to think about sustainability. They started to think about their legacy what would they leave when they were gone? Would they just leave their art pieces, which anthropologically speaking, can tell a story about your experience and about the culture and society of that time, but were they, they interested in also sharing that skill, creating apprentices as such to ensure that their type of work is sustainable? The consequence of that type of thinking resulted in the creation of a number of art schools and artists taking on students to teach them. And also it created a more communi community oriented movement where artists decided that they wanted to express what society was going through, all their problems, all their successes, and they wanted to do it with students as well. They wanted the students to have their own voice so case in point would be people like Raquel Art, who created her school out of COVID, one, to ensure that she was able to process what she was feeling, and two, to engage children. Mind you, this was done virtually to, be, to begin with and continued when COVID, the lockdown ended into face-to-face. -face. In Belly City, we have Kirk and Smith as well who has carried on the tradition of teaching art. Now, all of these things tell us that our heritage is important. It tells us that sustainability is important. 
It tells us that art is important when we come to processing trauma, processing our experiences, and it is important to tell a story about a particular period that is unique in our lifetime, which is COVID. A number of art pieces were created across Belize by various artists in various forms. We have Tom Sharp creating his abstract pieces, which were darker during that time and lightened up when COVID ended. So in terms of sustainability, that era highlighted the need for it and the importance of the visual art world in Belize. Interactive participation has a distinct advantage in the dissemination of culture, but it also has an advantage connecting you to the community. Social participation, artistic aesthetics, and sharing our diversity are all important, especially when it comes to the visual arts and sustainability, which is the sustainability of our heritage. The case in study is Raquel Art. They have worked uh, to integrate life skills, governance, and art to help children identify and nurture their abilities. And Raquel Art has also had extensive work with disadvantaged communities focusing on work on violence, climate change, the environment, mental health, bringing awareness to all of these things. Now, when we think about youth, we need to understand that the utilization of visual arts is extremely important. It helps with trauma, especially for those youth within disadvantaged communities where trauma or traumatic experiences are most high. It helps them to process it. And it also helps in dissemination, the sharing of their experiences. And that, in part, is culture understanding their unique abilities, their, their heritage, their ancestral skills, all of those things are important when we think about sustaining skills and sustaining our heritage. In art-based action research, projects are observed, investigated, planned, and carried out through and using the artistic expression. This technique helps the creative mind discover fresh possibilities for project development. The application of artistic approaches in business brings new viewpoints. It changes the culture of that particular business and offers employees to have an outlet for expression. These techniques are use creative processes as their main mode of inquiry, resulting in a variety of artistic mediums for data collection, analysis, and or presentation of social science research. Now this is speaking about the application in actual research. What the researcher does is draw from a variety of artistic disciplines, including theater, dance, music, visual arts, writing, and textiles. The researcher often spends time with people while they engage in various artistic pursuits. They then try to understand the subject's experiences and is informed, the research is therefore informed by this effort. The research becomes more embodied as a result. The process is analyzed and used in the final evaluation of the project. It is being used to study psychological topics such as depression. Here, the, uh, the a product such as our journal is used to facilitate and inform conversations on topics around mental illness. It can be uh, textile, again, it can be visual arts as well. Research and post-traumatic stress disorder then create and perform a play. For example, in PTSD, they use theater and drama for it. And they draw on personal exp um, experiences. With the audience's reactions and feedback, the use of that data plus the artifact that was created, which is the journal, gives a more embodied research um, project. The researcher then uses the subject's identity by incorporating the use of photography. Participants then reflect on their lives using photographs to create stories and discussions. This is another method. 
So in terms of art-based research, it gives a wider scope for creativity, but it also gives a richer output in terms of the projects that you can that can be created and the research that can be done to understand one psychology to improve business productivity and for general trauma uh, therapy. So art in research and art in business in this using this type of method is extremely valuable. To continue a discussion on applying art to business, uh, art-based practices help leaders and teams explore new ideas. It creates more of a collaborative environment within a business. And it engages in aesthetic inquiry. They promote visual literacy, cross-pollinating and cross-pollinating ideas. It reframe, it allows both employee and employer to reframe issues that may have been concerning the company or the business in the past. And with that ability to reframe and to analyze it using art, it can foster new ideas. These practices enhance communication and gives a more of a collaborative feeling. It fosters diverse perspectives. It allows the freedom of expression and it does disseminate culture. The person, the employee and the employee's personal culture across the business environment. By integrating artistic and relational intelligence with analytical and operational intelligence, artful reflection and self-discovery can lead to deeper inquiry into matters of importance. For example, if we were to look at a company who has been venturing out into applying more sustainable methods to their business practices, more climate conscious methods to their business practices, by engaging in workshops that have art within that program, it allows your employees to dive deeper into their minds to find new ideas and can result in new projects and programs that can further push that company into the right direction, thereby achieving their version of sustainable development. So why should we invest in art and artists? We spent quite a bit of time talking about art as sustaining your cultural heritage. That's one important reason as to why the visual arts is important in places like Belize, especially places that promote tourism like Belize. It gives the persons who are visiting your country a story that is visual. It's also a micro business. Supporting your artists means that you're sustaining the economy and you're sustaining society. It's a viable business and therefore should be respected as such. When bought and placed in businesses or homes, it, in, it can enhance efficiency. Certain businesses have noted that when you place certain types of positive art around their locations, around their offices, it promotes a positive attitude, which then enhances employee efficiency. It also helps promote ownership. Ownership to your culture, ownership to your country, a national pride should you own something from a local artist. It enhances the overall aesthetics of the, the community. If there, there is art, there, there is mural art on the walls. If you own art through, in, within your homes, it also promotes an ownership and a national pride within your actual household. So aesthetically speaking, art is important. In terms of your national pride, art is important. Efficiency, it can drive that. And it is an economically viable option for many people and their skill promotes your country. Therefore, the investment in art and the respect of artists throughout Belize is something that should not be overlooked. And I hope by this presentation, you have greater insight into how important the visual arts is now, what it was, how it was important in the past, and how it can be important to your future.
Thank you for listening to this presentation. A big thank you to Heritage Network for allowing me to have this discussion with you and to the artists who participated. To all the artists in Belize, um, I encourage you to continue creating and to everyone out there, support the local arts, support your local culture. And thanks again.